We're doing an inspection today for construction stage inspection. And this stage here is called a slab stage inspection. We're inspecting this whole slab right here before it gets poured tomorrow. This is a waffle slab setup. Basically, you've got these pods that are being installed. Believe it or not, it's polystyrene. And we've got the mesh sitting on top of these bar chairs. We're gonna assess the installation of the steel fabric as per the engineering, see if the slab setup is as per the engineering. This slab has been passed by the building surveyor. He's driven past here, he's had a look at it and he's happy with it. However, there's missing steel, non-compliant works. Let me show you what's going on, let's go. Now, I'm really excited because I wanna show you guys how to use this tool right here that we have on our website called the Wolverine Gauge, which measures reinforcement and it's got some really cool rulers, one ruler here and another ruler on this side. And I'm gonna show you guys how to use that for your inspection. So the first thing I wanted to show you guys is that I wanna show you a table from the engineering plan. And I wanna just shed some light on what is required on the engineering versus what is installed on site. For example, the box size is 1090 by 1090. Now, if I get my tape measure out and I measure the box size, let's see what it is. 1090 by 1090. Let's see if they've installed it correctly. Right there. 1090 by 1090. Beautiful. So this is what the box is right there. And it's installed correctly. You can see right there. Then we have the box height as per the engineering shows that it should be 300 mil. We measure it right there, 300 mil. That's the box height, 300 mil. Beautiful. Then let's look at the reinforcement. SL92 mesh to the top of the slab. You can see here there's a mesh that's on top of the slab. And we're gonna actually use this tool here, which we sell on our website, to see if it is SL92 mesh. Now, what is SL92 mesh? Well, as per the NCC, SL92 means it's a nine mil diameter spaced at 200 mil spacings. Now, you can see this gauge right here, we've got a SL92 section. So if we place that right on the reinforcement right here, we can see SL92, beautiful. See, SL82, I can't fit it in it, but SL92 is perfect. So this is SL92, 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 beautiful. And it's spaced at 200, so if we have a look at the tape measure, 200 mil. And then we've got internal rib reinforcement, edge beam reinforcement, and internal beam reinforcement. So we've got internal rib, edge beam reinforcement, and also internal beam reinforcement. What, do, what does that all mean? Now, first, if we take a look at the slab, and I'll show you guys an aerial view of the slab. All these little sections between the pods are called internal ribs. Internal rib, right there. This section here, internal rib. Internal rib, internal rib. All these little sections right there, internal rib. See that line that goes all the way there? Internal rib, internal ribs. And the requirement for that is one N16 bar, which means a 16 mil thick bar, or two N12 bars to the bottom. Now, you can see the bar is right there. How about we take a measure? How do we measure that bar to know if it's N16? Well, we've got this tool. This section of the gauge measures the bar thickness. So if we insert this right that inside, we can see 
It is an N16 bar. Have a look, guys. N16. Let me just place it. You can see it's an N16 bar. You take a photo, you verify the, the calculation, you verify the size on site. Really cool tool to have. Beautiful for verification of the bars. Have a look at this as well. Look at this. 16 mil. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful guys. Look at that. Take a photo. Nice. Now, now that we have verified that the internal ribs everywhere are N16 bars, this is what we're doing now. We're just checking out the reinforcement throughout to see if they've got the right measurements. We've got SL92 at the, at the top, beautiful. Internal ribs, N16 bars, beautiful, done. Now, the next section on the table that they have is something called the edge beam reinforcement. Now, the edge beam reinforcement, it states two, three L11 trench mesh or three N16 bars to the bottom. Now, let's go back to the front of the, to the, front of the home right here to show you what an edge beam is. So, the edge beam is This section of the slab, all the edge, the entire edge of the slab is an edge beam. They call it an edge beam. Right there, edge beam, edge beam. And, and the requirement for that is to have two, three, L11, right there. They've got two of them, trench mesh. Now, three L11 trench mesh means, if you want to know the interpretation for that, there's actually a a nice uh, explanatory information in the NCC. I've got an off cut that was right over there. And three L11 means there's three long bars like this that are 11 mil in diameter. Now, how do we measure that as well? L11, so three, one, two, three long bars and measure that 11 mil. Now we've got on this gauge as well, L11 trench mesh, you can see it right there. You put it on it, look at this, beautiful. Take a picture as well to verify that it's correct. There's a lot of times that some of the, some of the concreters supply the incorrect steel, but now we've verified it right there. Three bars at 11 mil each, beautiful. So we've got that. And on the engineering, it states for the edge beam, there has to be two. And you can see it right there, two. They've got one and two. They've tied them together, and that's throughout. They've done it properly all the way throughout. Excellent work. Now, <laughs> we've got internal beam reinforcement. It says, internal beam reinforcement to three L11 trench mesh, basically the same thing, two of them, for the internal beams. Internal beams are this beam right here. This is an internal beam. Right there, internal beam. Edge beam, edge beam, internal beam. And then you've got the internal ribs. Rib, 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 internal beam, edge beam. Each one has its own reinforcement requirement. Now, on the engineering, it says it gives us the, the width of the internal rib width and also the edge beam width so the edge beam width is supposed to be 300 mil now if i measure this right now it's actually 500 look at that we've got 450 we've got 500 so you can see that it's increased in width and the engineering and not only the engineering actually uh, 2870 has a requirement that for every 100 mil in increase of width there has to be an extra bar that has to be installed there now the engineer 
has got his own specifications in terms of hey if you increase the width more than 100 mil an extra bar has to be in place now if we look at what he says on the engineering it says all beams or internal ribs wider than specified slab design summary shall be reinforced with an additional bar top and bottom for every 100 mil increase in width referred to internal rib reinforcement bar so we can see here there's nothing they haven't they've just put the they've just put the trench mesh so basically an extra bar an n16 bar has to be installed here which there's nothing here they haven't put it in so how did this get passed i do not know how this got passed this is a job site you walk in you see that the edge beam has had an increase in width which means an extra bar has to be installed really easy stuff once somebody teaches you those things so i don't even know how this got passed by the building surveyor <laughs> and then also we have an internal beam right there now if we look at the internal beam also it's got a measurement of 300 mil as per the slab design summary now if we go here and we measure that internal beam let's see what it is if it's more than 300 mil remember for every 100 mil you have to put a bar you have to put a bar so here we've got 600 wow and it's just got the trench mesh inside so also non-compliant they've got one bar here one let's measure it what it is they've got one bar and i can really tell this is an n12 bar but we're going to put this and see what it is see we've verified it they've got one n12 bar on top however it's 600 width here so basically they need an extra bar for every single 100 mil non-compliant and then we've got another edge beam right here <clears throat> and you can see it's more than 300 mil let's take a little measure of what it is exactly Five hundred and thirty-two. So for every hundred mil, there has to be a bar. So how the hell did the engineer miss this? So that's we've got here a compromise edge beam right here. Nothing, missing bars. Unbelievable. The other thing I wanted to mention as well, another item. We've got the N sixteen bars here. Now, AS2870 and the engineering plans specify that when you want to splice the bars, you can see the bar right here, this N16 bar, how it's inside the internal rib, which was a requirement that this N16 bar has to be in all the ribs, all the internal rib. Now, when you want to join them together like this, AS2870 states 700 mil is the minimum, but the engineer said it's 600 which is all right but here if we measure it we've only got just over 300 mil 335 so this is non-compliant so there's one here there's one here there's one there as well non-compliant so you can see that they haven't done it for this for this whole internal beam hasn't been spliced properly so the lap is not compliant right there how can you let that go even this side as well all this section is not done correctly this one's done correctly let's measure this one if it's 600 let's take a measure all right check out right there it's five it's 540 non-compliant <laughs> it's still not compliant oh my goodness so you can see guys that missing still would you let me know in the comments would you accept these deficiencies would you accept these oversights nah it's all right bro there's a lot of steel here don't stress about it bro she'll be right all we're asking for is the minimum standards and it's not achieved 
So that's what I found so far. And I wanted to show, to show some of the things that I found for this slab. And another requirement as per the national construction codes, and a lot of people don't even know about that, is that see how there's spray paint here? And there's also spray paint on the reinforcement. Now, this is also non-compliant because it does say that reinforcement must be cleaned of loose rust, mud, paints, and oils immediately prior to pouring the slab. So, you can see here how there is spray paint. I know it's minor items, but sometimes they spray the hell out of them. And I just wanted to let you guys know about this clause as well. For all the guys out there that are starting to do inspections, have a look at this. Non-compliant works. Just be mindful of that. And yeah. Another thing that I want to talk about is those black plastic things that are sitting underneath this fabric, this metal fabric. Now, this item right here is called a bar chair and it helps elevate the mesh off the slab. So basically, it's, it will be suspended within the concrete. Now, the NCC 2019 clearly states that the maximum distance between the bar chairs can't be more than 800 mil. You can see there's a measurement here of 1.2 meters or 1200 mil. This is a minor item, however, it is non-compliant. 